Sidang magabok sa ating lahat. Uh, may po ay araw ng linggo at muli na naman po tayo uh, makakapagpuri. Salamat sa ating Diyos. Uh, bagamat tayo ay magkakahiwalay, nasa kanya-kanya mga tahanan tayo. Ngunit ang ating mga puso at isip, ating mga buhay ay masaya at sama-sama magpupuri sa kanya. Sabi po sa Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Tapos po sa verse 11 You are worthy our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Tunay nga ang salita ng Diyos. Sinasabi doon na we should give God glory because He is worthy of glory, honor, and praise. Kaya ngayon sa umagang ito, kantahin po natin yung kantang glory at sama-sama po tayong uh, magpuri. Bigay natin ang best na praise natin para sa Kanya.
Yes, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to give you glory, honor, and praise. As we continue, Lord, to listen to your word, may you bless us, keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Yan, kamusta po tayo? Kamusta ang pag-sustay natin sa bahay? No, kamusta ang kalagayan natin at ang relationship natin sa Panginoon? So, in short, kamusta po yung lahat-lahat sa atin ngayong we're under enhanced community quarantine pa din. No? So, we're on uh, season 3 na ng ating enhanced community quarantine. Pero, alam niyo po ba na ako'y natutuwa, no? I'm glad that you're able to watch this video dahil alam ko that it's not an accident that you're watching right now. Dahil may purpose. May purpose ang Panginoon. Bakit mo pinapanood to ngayon? And if you're a member of the church, this message is really for you. And I hope that you stay tuned in until the end of the video. So ngayon, I want you to set your focus on the Lord and on what He's going to teach you today. And set aside muna natin yung ating mga ginagawa at ibigay natin yung time na ito para sa Panginoon. So bago po tayo mag-proceed, tayo po muna ay manalang. So let us pray first. Ama namin Diyos na pinakamakapangyarihan sa lahat. Maraming salamat po Panginoon sa panibagong umagang ito na ibinigay niyo sa amin. Salamat sa patuloy na pag-iingat mo sa amin, Panginoon. Salamat sa patuloy na Um, pagpaprovide mo sa amin. Pinupuri ka po namin at pinasasalamatan Lord sa kabutihan at patuloy na kadakilaan mo sa buhay namin. Salamat sa patuloy na pagpaparamdam ng iyong pag-ibig sa amin sa araw-araw. Dalangin ko po Panginoon na patuloy niyo pong pagaling, pagalingin yung mga may sakit Panginoon um, yung aming mga frontliners patuloy niyo po silang bigyan ng strength Panginoon. And also sa Um, lahat po ng mga nakikinig ngayon, um, patuloy niyo pong buksan ang kanilang puso at isipan sa pakikinig ng inyong salita. Gamitin niyo po ang inyong lingkod sa pagbabahagi ng inyong misahe. Ito po aking dalangin sa inyo, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ayan. So, today po, I'll be sharing to you the topic, How to be an effective church member. Ayan. Pero gusto ko munang bigyan ng linaw kung ano ba talaga ang ibig sabihin ng church. No? Kaya, um, Panoorin po natin yung short clip from Central Films na ipa-flash dito sa screen. What is the church? Is the church a building? Is the church a pastor? Or the staff? Is the church the music? the tradition or the ministries these are all good things but they are not the church take them away and the church is still here why because you are still here the church is you The church is you with a purpose. The church is you on a mission. The church is you with a plan, a simple plan to plug into God at a weekend service, to charge up in a small group community, to live out using your gifts and passions, and to pass on your faith to those who do not know Christ. When you and I live like this, 
all the things we used to do in church become things we do as the church. God desires it. The world needs it. And we are called to be it. What is the church? The church is you. films na ipa-flash dito sa screen. Okay, so ngayon na panood niyo na no. So from what we have watched, uh, nakita natin that the church is not a building, no. The church is not a building and the church is an assembly of people who profess and give evidence that they have been saved by God's grace alone for his glory alone, through faith alone in Christ alone. The church is a local, living, and loving collection of people who are committed to Christ and committed to each other. Now, the church is a display of God's kingdom and glory and a display of counter-cultural Christ-like love. In short, mula dun sa pinanood nating video, sinasabi na dun na the church is you. No? The church is me. No? The church is us. So, take away the music, the building, the ministries, the church programs, the traditions. Take away those things and the church will still be there because the church is you. No? It's us. Mananatili ang church kahit walang church building, no? kahit walang music, mga church programs. Mananatili yan dahil ang church ay ikaw. Ang church ay tayo. <clears throat> Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 12.27, Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. And this is what I want you to understand. Because each of us, as part of the community of believers, of the church, and as a church, meron tayong responsibility. No? Sabi nga sa video, the church is you with a purpose, with a mission. So we have a responsibility as a church. So isa lang ang gusto ni Lord, nung tinanggap mo siya, bilang Panginoon na tagapagligtas, gusto niya maging effective ka and sundin mo yung calling niya sa'yo kung saan ka tinawag. Yun ang gusto ng Panginoon. But unfortunately, hindi lahat ng tumanggap, hindi lahat na nagsisimba, or kahit matatagal na sa church are doing their part or share in the ministry of the Lord. So, um, gusto ko lang po i-share sa inyo yung Um, sinabi ng isang author, evangelist, isang pastor na si Dr. Billy Tenney Pritian, sinasabi niya doon na may three classes of members or three kinds of church members. Una is yung the idol or idlers. So, when we say idlers, ito yung mga taong they join the church but all they do is suck the lifeblood from the congregation and they give nothing back. Normally, sila yung mga Um, church members na laging nagko-complain, uh, nagko-gossip, pero wala naman din talagang itinutulong or kinokontribute sa church. Ito yung sinabi ni Paul sa 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 6. No? Um, in that verse, he gave a warning and a command sa Thessalonian church. Sabi niya doon, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brother, to keep away from every brother who is idle, and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us from us so ano ba ang ginagawa ng mga idol christians sabi doon sa verse 11 ng if ng second thessalonians sa pinoy version nababalitaan namin na may mga tao diyan sa inyo na tamad at walang ibang ginawa kundi pakialaman ng buhay ng iba ayan so ano normally ginagawa nila no pinapakialaman nila yung buhay ng iba at normally sila yung mga taong taman. Yan ang ginagawa ng mga idol Christian. Kaya sabi nga doon, huwag pakainin yung taong tamad, no? Hindi dapat pinapakain. And these Christians are more on the getting part. So, pangalawang klase naman is yung faithful consumers. Yung faithful consumers are simply those church members who are more committed, of course, than the idols. 
However, yung commitment nila ay limited. No? Faithful sila to attend worship services, fellowships, and other programs. And they support it if it's worth to them. But still, they are more on the getting or consuming part. And these people, masakit man sabihin, um, these are the typical Christians of our time. And commonly, sila yung malaki yung porsyentong uh, sila yung bumubuo ng, ng, ng church. So, pangatlo naman, yung faithful committed disciple of Jesus Christ. Eto mga Christians na to, ang tinatawag na cross-carrying Christians. Sila yung mga faithful committed disciples of Jesus Christ who are faithful to the faith, to the church, to the Great Commission. Pero sad to say, um, few churches have very few cross-carrying Christians. Sabi nga sa Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Sabi din sa Luke 10, verse 2, no, sinabi doon that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Bakit ganon? Ang daming krisyano pero ang laborers kakaunti. No? So a committed disciple of Jesus Christ makes more disciple of Jesus Christ. Yan ang palatandaan ng isang faithful committed disciple of Jesus Christ. Hindi siya takot to take a step forward or take the risk of his calling. And now, knowing all of this, um, tignan natin yung ating mga sarili. Let's evaluate ourselves. Saan ba kayo dyan sa tatlong binanggit ko? No? Saan ka ba dyan? Bakit ka kaya nagiging idol? Or bakit ka kaya um, faithful consumer? Or ikaw ba ay isang um, cross-carrying Christian? Sa tingin mo, saan ka dyan? Yan. Siguro, baka kaya ka nagiging idol dahil kulang ang suot mo. Suot? Yes, suot. No? Kaya ka nagiging faithful consumer, limitado ang galaw mo. Limitado ang galaw mo ay baka dahil din kulang ang suot mo. Yan. So, suot talaga? Yes. Bakit suot? Kasi may kailangan tayong suotin araw-araw. Baka kaya ka nagiging ganun kasi hindi mo sinusuot yung, yung mga bagay na ito. So, alam nyo ba na everyday, we're on a spiritual battle and we need spiritual defense. So, ang Bible, no, the Bible often illustrates the Christian life as a battle against sin and Satan. Tayo kasi, we are soldiers of Christ in a spiritual warfare. No? Sabi nga sa scripture, as the scriptures say, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual host of wickedness. Sabi sa Ephesians 6 verse 12. That's why si Apostle Paul, he encourages Christians to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yan, sabi po sa verse 11. So, ayan. So, let's take a look at each piece of this spiritual spiritual armor and see how it can enable us to be victorious as soldiers for Christ in our battle against the spiritual host of wickedness and turn us into an effective servant of the Lord. And, or turn us into an effective you know, church member. So if you have your Bible with you, turn your Bible in Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18. So ito, ito po ang sinasabi. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your, for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of this, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword, sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. 
To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all saints. So, ayun. So, ngayon, ang pag-uusapan po natin ay yung armor of God. No? Spiritual armor of God. Ayan. So, um, bakit spiritual armor of God? E, effective servant of the Lord ang topic natin ngayon. Kasi, um, in order for us to be an effective servant of the Lord, in order for us to be um, effective church member, we must know na we are soldiers of God at kailangan ready tayo in every spiritual battle. So, kailangan malaman natin to for us alam natin yung ating, no, ating susuotin no, dahil araw-araw tayo ay nasa gera. So, unahin natin yung belt of truth. So, belt of truth, Ephesians 6 verse 14. No? Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. Yun sabi ni Paul. Truth is the belt that holds all the other pieces of the armor in place. There are two ways in which truth is a part of the armor of God. Una, ang truth, it refers to the truth of scripture as opposed to the lies of Satan. No, alam naman natin na si Satan ang father of all lies. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the great truths of the Bible, ano, ano, ano ba yun? The love of God, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, yung second coming niya, yung forgiveness of sin, yung grace, and yung power to live for Jesus. Ito yung mga katotohanan na nagpapalaya sa atin. No? So these truths set us free from Satan lies. Satan's lies. Satan would have us believe that we are sinful, lost, and without hope. But the truth is, no, yung lo- God's love and salvation, no, it has set us free from sin and death. So the second way the truth serves as a belt, holding together the full armor of God, is our personal commitment dun sa katotohanan na yun. Ano yung personal commitment natin? To live a life that is upright, transparent, and without deceit. No, integrity and honesty, very vital yan sa Christian life. So people should know that they can depend on you to be a person of truth and principle. Napaka-importante po nan. Pangalawang armor is the breastplate of righteousness na makikita natin sa Ephesians 6 verse 14 din. So yung breastplate, no, it covers the heart. So kapag ka sa um, yung mga soldier, no, may breastplate, kinokovera nito yung heart and it and shields it and other the vital and other vital organs so the bible says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life sabi sa proverbs 4 verse 23 that is what Christ's righteousness does for you it protects you against all of satan's accusations and charges and this righteousness is not made up of the good deeds you, that you do. No? The Bible is clear that none of us are righteous in ourselves. Sabi sa Romans 3 verse 10. So itong breastplate of righteousness is entirely the righteousness of Jesus, which He gives us freely nung tinanggap natin siya bilang um, ating Panginoon na tagapagligtas. No? It is Christ's righteousness, not our own righteousness, that covers and protects us. So, importante yan, no? May breastplate of righteousness tayo dahil iyan ang magsishield sa atin, no? Sa ating puso. And pangatlo, yung shoes of the gospel na matatagpuan sa Ephesians 6 verse 15. Shoes of the gospel, no? Ang mga soldiers, nagmamarch sila sa battle, di ba? So, kailangan ng comfortable shoes. And as soldiers of Christ, we must put on gospel shoes that will allow us to march wherever our Lord leads. So the Apostle John says, He who says he abides in him, or Jesus, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Sabi sa 1 John 2 verse 6. And Jesus said, sabi niya sa John 10 verse 27, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so si Satan, he will try to place obstacles in our path. No, pero dahil sa kalakasan ay binibigay ng ating Panginoon, we can walk forward, no, following our Lord, obeying him and advancing the gospel. So, very important na ito, itong shoes of the gospel ay ating daladala sa anumang panahon. 
dapat araw-araw natin siyang suot. Bilang soldier of Christ, no, we must put on the gospel shoes. So that um, we can obey Him, we can follow Him, no, we can help in the advancement of the kingdom of God. So, pang-apat naman, yung shield of faith na matatagpuan natin sa verse um, 16. Yan. So, itong shield of faith na to, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga unang binanggit ko, more on um, mga pandepensa, no? So, ito, isang klaseng pandepensa din. The shield of faith. Yan. Sabi ni Paul, above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. No, sabi niya sa verse 16. So, si Satan, uh, normally, uh, umaatake siya sa atin. No? Binibigyan niya tayo ng doubts. Pero yung shield of faith, din yung nag-turn. No? Din yung nag-turn, yun yung nag-shield sa atin. Para hindi tayo magkaroon ng doubts, hindi tayo mag-worry. Yan. Hindi tayo maging anxious. So, when temptation comes, faith keeps us steadfast in following Jesus. No? So, kung meron tayong shield of faith, we are able to withstand all the devil's fiery darts because we know whom we have believed. No? So, itong faith na to, hindi to nagmumula sa atin. No? Ito ay regalo ng Panginoon sa atin. He, gi- he gives each of us a measure of faith. And then, habang lumalakad tayo sa Panginoon, itong pananampalataya na ito, lumalago to, at nagdi-develop ito hanggang sa maging shield, no? Protecting us and allowing us to live a victorious life in Christ. Ito, ito yung na-experience ni Paul, no? Itong shield of faith na to. So, isa siya sa makakapagpatunay. Sabi sa Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. No, And at the end of that life of faith, he declared, no, sa 2 Timothy verse 4-7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. No? So, yung na-experience ni Paul, no, life of faith, pwede rin natin yung ma-experience. No, as we use the shield of faith to turn aside everything Satan hurls at us. No? So, napaka-importante nito, no, pananampalataya. Ang pananampalataya, kung meron tayo nito, it will, um, uh, it keeps us going. It keeps us going. And, Si Lord, no, kung tayo ay hihingi kay Lord na patatagin niya ang ating pananampalataya, makakaasa tayo, no, na sa bawat problema na ating nararanasan, malalagpasan natin yun dahil alam natin na si Lord ang nagpapatatag sa atin. And so, magiging uh, victorious ang ating buhay. So, panglima naman is yung helmet of salvation. Yan. Alam naman natin, no, pag sinabing helmet, inilalagay sa ulo. So, helmet of salvation na matatagpuan natin sa Ephesians 6 verse 17. Ang helmet, it protects the head. No, perhaps yung helmet, yan yung vital part of the body since it is the seat of thought and mind. And when we have a sure knowledge of our salvation, we will not be moved by Satan deceptions. No? Kapag tayo sigurado that we are in Christ, no, with our sins forgiven, we will have a peace that nothing, nothing can disturb. No, importante yung helmet of salvation dahil no, normally sa utak talaga natin nagdudwell ang lahat. No, nasa mind natin nagdudwell ang lahat. So kailangan meron tayong sure knowledge no about God, sure knowledge of our salvation. No, so ang tanong can we be certain of our salvation? Can we be sure? Yes. So sabi sa 1 John 1:9, if we confess our sins, Si Jesus, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And sabi sa 1 John 5 verse 11 and 12, God has given us eternal life and this life is, is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. So, no, let us always wear the helmet of salvation dahil po protektahan yan tayo. No, 
kailangan maging matatag tayo sa ganitong klaseng aspeto, no? Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng sure knowledge of our salvation so that hindi tayo ma-move, no? When the devil, no, strike us or kapag ka ang devil umatake talaga sa atin. So, yun. And, um, pang-anim, sword of the spirit na matatagpuan natin sa verse 17 or mababasa natin sa verse 17. Sword of the Spirit. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung limang mga binanggit ko kanina, puro siya pang, ano, pang depensa. Ito lang yung nag-iisang offense, no? pang-atake, yung Sword of the Spirit. Yung Sword of the Spirit is the only weapon of offense listed in the armor of God. Dahil yung, yung limang binanggit ko ay more on defense. No? So, ang guard, God's Word, the Bible, dinidescribe siya as living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. No? Ito yung ginamit ni Jesus na weapon nung si Satan ay tinempt siya sa wilderness. No? To each of Satan's efforts to lead him into sin, ang lagi nire-reply ni Jesus, it is written. No? And proceeded to quote scripture to destroy Satan's temptation. God's Word is truth. Sabi yan sa John 17, 17, kaya iyan ay sobrang powerful. And that is why it is so important na um, aaralin natin yung Bible and become familiar with its truth, truths and its power. So, sabi nga ni David sa Psalm 119, verse 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The sword of God's word both protects us and destroys our enemy, no? the devil and his temptation. So, important ito that we have the sword of the Spirit. No? Dahil ito lang yung only um, pang-attack natin, no? pang-opensa sa kalaban. No? The rest is more on defense. Pero if we have this, no? mas makapangyarihan tayo. And then, sa verse 18 ng Ephesians, no? hindi to kasama sa armor of God, pero napaka-importante nito, yung prayer. All the prayer no, is not one of the pieces of the whole armor of God. Yet, kinlose ni Paul yung list niya no, by saying, no, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Even when you are clothed with the armor of God, you need to bathe it all in prayer. Prayer brings you into communion and fellowship with God so that His armor can protect no. So, itong prayer na to, kung walang panalangin, manghihina pa rin tayo. So, kailangan natin na yung panalangin, no, araw-araw, dinidevelop natin yan sa sarili natin. Kung kinakailangan, struggle, struggle natin yung pananalangin sa Panginoon. No. Um, kailangan natin maging transparent when it comes to prayer. Dahil, Ito, ito, itong, ito yung pananalangin. Ito yung talagang magbibigay sa atin ng lakas sa lahat ng oras. No? Kailangan natin ng communication. Kailangan natin ng communion with God. Diba? Ang leader, ba? Kailangan nakikipag-communicate siya. So yun, prayer is the only communication that we have no? sa Panginoon. So, direct communication to. So, kaya kailangan ito yung dinidevelop natin. So, how do you put on the whole armor of God? So, it isn't as difficult as you might think. All the pieces of the armor are found in a relationship with Jesus. No, Simple lang. Lahat ng armor na ito, matatagpuan mo kung may relationship ka kay Jesus Christ. Sabi nga ni Paul sa Romans 13 verse 14, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you give yourself to Jesus and put on His righteousness, you are clothed in the whole armor of God. So, minsan ba nararamdaman nyo na kayo ay nanghihina? Do you find yourself giving in to temptation when you really want to overcome? Are you ever discouraged? So, do you sometimes feel weak? Do you find yourself giving in to temptation when you really want to overcome? Are you ever discouraged? No, we all face these moments. Nararamdaman natin to, no? Pero, ang encouragement sa atin is clothe ourselves in the whole armor of God. The weakest of his children is more than a match for Satan. So, in Jesus, clothed in God's invisible armor, you will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. No? Sa tingin ko kasi po, um, 
gasgas na akong sasabihin ko sa inyo na in order for you to become an effective church member, you have to attend church every Sunday, give your tithe, support the ministry, no? discipleship, ganyan. Alam nyo na yung lahat eh, hindi na yan bago sa inyo. But what I really want to point is in this time of crisis, we're under season 3 of ECQ, no? actually extended siya no? until May 15, hindi tayo pwedeng lumabas ng bahay. So, how are we going to be an effective church member? No. How how are we going to buy, to be an effective church member? Si, simple lang. Uh, nilagyan ko ng meaning yung word na ECQ. Yan, ECQ or enhance. Yung acronym na ECQ, Enhanced Community Quarantine. Nilagyan ko siya ng meaning. So, ang meaning sa akin is engage, communicate with the Lord in this quarantine season. No. Engage, communicate with the Lord in this quarantine season. So, letter E, engage. No? So, paano tayo magiging effective church member or servant of our Lord Jesus Christ sa ganitong panahon? Engage. You look for ways on how you can engage with the society and with the church members. Like, if you have internet connection, you can chat or video call. No? Yung mga kaibigan mo, mga friends mo, mga churchmates mo, pwede mo silang i-chat ng personal PM mo sila and kamustahin yung mga kapatira natin sa Panginoon. No? Mag-engage tayo doon sa mga bagay na nakikita nating makakatulong sa spiritual life ng bawat isa without violating the law. Since hindi naman tayo pwedeng lumabas. No? And mas maganda rin kung sensitive tayo sa needs nila. We can pray and send help. No? Material man yan, financial or any help no? sa mga nangangailangan na friends or kapatira natin. Kasi mas maganda kung meron ka, wag mong ipagdamot. That's one way of showing how God loves them. At mas mararamdaman nila yon na mahal sila ng Panginoon. Through you, no, sa pangamagitan mo na isinishare mo yung blessing mo. Pangalawa, um, engage, letter C, communicate with the Lord. Communication with the Lord, no spend time in prayer, have a deeper study of His Word. This is a great time to reflect. etong season na ito, itong oras na ito, Noon, lagi lang tayo nasa bahay. This is a great time to reflect. No, I-exercise natin yung sword of the spirit. Ang temptation, walang pinipiling lugar at panahon. Ngayon, mas marami yung time natin sa paggamit ng mga gadgets. Mas madaming temptations. Kaya dapat tayong maging maingat sa mga pinapanood natin, sa mga binabasa natin, sa mga sinishare natin. No, kasi ginagamit yan ng kaaway. Ang kaaway active na active ngayong panahon na ito. Ginagamit yan ng kaaway para... No, lumayo ang relasyon mo sa Panginoon. So, engage, communicate with the Lord in this quarantine season. Q, quarantine season. So, in this season, this is a season for us to be more united as one family. Dahil nasa bahay lang tayo, no, this is also a time to spend time and be closer with your loved ones. In this quarantine season, marami tayong pwedeng gawin. Pwede, marami tayong pwedeng gawin. Pwede tayong maging productive. No? If we choose to be productive, mas maganda talaga, no? Kaysa yung lagi lang tayo natutulog, mas maganda na engage natin yung sarili natin sa mga um, productive things or productive na bagay na pwedeng gawin sa loob ng bahay. Ayan. And also, yun nga, spend time tayo sa Panginoon, no? More time para sa Kanya. And as an end, let's wear the full armor of God every day, no? Saan man tayo magpunta na lugar, Let's wear the full armor of God. Ano mang season ng ating buhay. Through that, mas mapagtatagumpayan natin ang bawat hamon na darating sa atin. So, yun lamang po, nawa po ay na-bless tayo sa oras na ito, sa pakikinig ng salita ng Panginoon. Pagpalaan po tayo lahat. Thank you.